Welcome to Great Northern Cascade Division in N-Scale. I want to talk a little bit about the SC5050 LED lighting that I'm using on the layout. So I've got another video where I actually talk about putting up the first 100 plus feet or so of lighting on this upper deck. But this video I wanted to get into the actual LEDs themselves, um, the lengths that they come in, how you cut them, how you connect the different strips together, the pigtail connectors that are available, some of the mounting options that are available for those, so that if you are looking at doing uh, this kind of lighting, you know, a little bit of reference as to what you're letting yourself in for. I saw a lot of talk on forums about people recommending SC5050 LEDs and needed various different measurements and readings and, and things like that, but I couldn't find an awful lot that actually showed it in use and showed all these different parts. So uh, do go and check out some of the other videos that I have on actually installing the LED lighting. I also have another video that talks about kind of some of the challenges and the considerations and why I chose these SC5050. LED lights for the layout as well. So I hope you enjoyed this, watching this one. Take care. Let me know you Alright, so let's look a little bit at these SC5050 LEDs. And so the LEDs themselves are the little yellow things that are kind of inside. The ones that I've gotten from ledsupply.com come inside this kind of waterproof connector. So the actual LED strip themselves is the much smaller white one inside there and then actually if you look really closely inside there's actually then a thin metallic strip that you can see that's where the leds are actually mounted the rest of this like i say it, it's it's kind of a, a waterproof coating so you've got the clear protector on top and you got the white on the outside um now there are a bunch of other leds that you can get that are <laughs> cheaper that are um you know going to be a little bit easier maybe to work with because they're not in this somewhat rigid like you can't quite bend it that way it's easy to, to flex it that way but in terms of trying to bend it that way yeah not so much so that is one thing to think about uh, with these they are a little bit bulky um i think that this ended up being uh three quarters of an inch wide by three eighths of an inch or a quarter of it yeah three eighths of an inch i think so it is somewhat bulky it is a little bit heavy as well um i showed in one of the other videos that it will droop if you aren't adequately supporting this um the other kind of thing to think about is there are some cheaper leds that i've seen that are waterproof where a lot of reviews said that they kind of go yellow over time so these ones are 5000 kelvin cool white there are other versions that you can get i think led supply do a 3000 kelvin uh, warm white um you know some leds that you can get now again more cheaper versions they maybe have different colors um you know they're rgb and so they also have some blue and red in them and so you can you know if you wanted to kind of blend some colors together but these are just straight uh, 5000 kelvin um you know pure white and i think that they they work pretty well you know if you want a little bit of a, a warmer tone you know maybe see your layout is going to be set later on in the day or something you know you you could try um you know those 3000 kelvin ones and see but overall these do work well the one thing about them now is let's try and spin around you have these chevrons and these are spaced at half meter intervals all right so to do the math that's like 19.685 inches i think in some of the videos i keep saying a little over 18 it's actually well over 18 it's it's more like 19 and a half inches this is kind of important the only place that you can cut these is right here on these chevrons okay you can't decide well actually you know i, I i'm going to cut it right here because that's why i mean at the end it's like no you have to cut it here and then just kind of deal with it so that does make it a little bit awkward because it the, the cutting marks are at half meter intervals or 19 0.685 inches because typically you're going to be working in four foot lengths or three foot lengths or eight foot lengths or, or whatever kind of nominal length that you're going with usually you build a layout kind of around that bench work the wooden framework and so these lights don't quite align with that um you know so that there are a few parts on that but i can my layout where you know it, it kind of overlaps a little bit it goes a little bit too far and then i had to extend the jumpers but that is one thing to bear in mind with these so let's then think about okay how are we going to mount these all right so you, you want to go with these lights how are you going to mount them so one option uh, comes with all of the strips of lights are these kind of flexible uh, plastic mounting clips 
And so the idea is that uh, you know, these would go under the LED strip like that, and then you know, the two screw holes, you would then screw that um, onto whatever kind of uh, framework that you have or mounting strip that you have, uh, length of pine or, or you know, aluminum channel, or whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, these were an absolute pain for me. I initially tried doing these just because they're so flexible, um, they're kind of hard to screw because they then kind of want to move around. The screws that they then give you are these uh, little brass screws that are just um, slotted head, and so they're an absolute pain to try and do. Um, yeah, I really didn't like trying to do these. I did try changing it out again just in the interests of okay well let's see and so i tried uh number four phillips screws i think these were uh three eighths of an inch something like that these did work a lot easier and then you could just use a regular phillips screwdriver but again the kind of flexible brackets uh i didn't find were all that great but you do get a bunch of these when you order the lights. I think you, you if, if you order a three foot length, I think you get two or three of these. If you order longer lengths, then you basically get one clip per three feet, I think is, is how they worked it. Um, so you, you do get some, but honestly, I would kind of ditch it and look, <laughs> I would look at something like uh, this plastic restware. So this is also available from ledsupply.com. There's other places where uh, you will probably be able to get this if you wanted to. Um, but with this plastic track, um, I found this so much easier to put in place. So if you look at it, it kind of has the U-shape. And so what then ends up happening is you would attach this to the underside of, your, of whatever it would be. And then the LED strips actually then just kind of push in. It is tight to push it in. I try and show it. What I found was you have to push it a little bit back and then bring it forward like that. Once it's in place, it's great. Uh, this plastic mounting track is pretty rigid. Take it back out again. This plastic track is fairly rigid. You know, it really doesn't bend a whole lot at all. And so you don't need to have it uh, screwed in an awful lot of places. The way that I did it was I just went through with an electric nail gun, 18 gauge nails, um, and literally just nailed it into the um, plywood framework that I'm using for the lighting deck. You could use double-sided tape. There are some instances actually where I ended up using these number four, three eighths inch screws um, just to give it a little bit more support. So you do need to think, okay, even if you go with the plastic track, how are you then going to still get this attached? You could screw it, double-sided tape, nail gun, whatever it is that you want to do. The cost of this does add up, though. Um, I will be honest, this ends up, I think it was $5 for three foot of this plastic restware. So you do have to kind of take that into account. But the alternatives that I looked at was aluminum channel. Okay, you've got to find that that's going to fit the same. Um, and it's okay if, it, if the aluminum channel doesn't then lock in, which it probably wouldn't. And okay, well, now you've got to figure out a double-sided tab that's going to be strong enough that's going to hold that comfortably. Um, other options that I had looked at, like I said, I, I, I did try these clips with then the number four screws. And I had uh, like one and a quarter inch um by uh, i think it was quarter inch pine and so i you know basically just a, a long eight foot strip of pine one and a quarter inches wide so it was just wide enough that um i guess it was just wide enough for this it was just wide enough that when the leds went on and you then had that mounting over it was just wide enough that it could go but again it was still a little bit of a pain to mount them so you need to think about how you're going to do that the cost of this does add up um, but it did make installation so much so much quicker <laughs> especially on a large layout where i had a lot of strats if you want to try and do a lot of corners if you've got a lot of curves and bends um, that does become a little trickier like i said this doesn't really flex all that well you can you can you can and you, you can kind of make it do it, but you then have to have somewhere that you're holding it in place. So, um, you know, maybe if you fashioned your own curved rest where you'd be able to do it, but it is something that you think about. Uh, the other one then is power. How do you then connect these? So these are the pigtails that, the, that you can purchase. This is a, a six inch pigtail that they make available. And what happens is you have these pins 
that come with them. So it comes together like that, you don't have to assemble it. And then on the end of these, you have two teeny little holes. All right, and so what will end up happening is one end is kind of flared and it has bobs, and so you would line it up with, the, I'm not gonna put it on, but you would line it up with those, uh, with those two holes, you push it in square, and basically what you're doing is, this is the, the wiring that is running through and actually powering each of the LEDs. And so you're kind of piercing that wiring uh, with the bob pieces. That will then hold it in place. And then these, the other side is then just rounded because what then happens is this will then slot inside. And when you push it all the way, it then goes through into those connectors and carries power to the other side. Same then on the other strip of LEDs. You would put these kind of bobbed pins in place. It would come in. There you go. They are polarized, so um, what I, I found, I think, only one time, thankfully when I was doing a video and I was trying to show this, I got it the right way around, but otherwise, uh, what you'll find is uh, you plug it in, it won't light up, and so you just have to flip it over, plug it in the other way, and it will work. It is kind of interesting, I don't know how well you can see that uh, the pins are on the top, which makes sense, because if we look at the lights, then where, it would, where are the holes there on the top, so, um, you know, in an ideal world, everything will go together but in practice what I found was most of the time that I still had to actually flip at least one end over to get that to work so these are the, uh, the SC5050 LEDs. I'm using the 5000 Kelvin uh, cool white on my layout. I do have another video where I kind of show installing all of these lights, uh, at least on the upper deck. I had a little over 100 feet, um, yeah, 120 feet, maybe something like that on the upper deck. Happy with how it turned out but it was a little bit of an effort to kind of piece all this together and decide that no i wanted to kind of use this plastic track west rest way um, now that it's all up there like i say happy with how it goes i think it does need a fascia over it to kind of cover it on the edging um, but again, there's then another video that I have that kind of talks about why I went with the 5050 LEDs, just some of the challenges that I have with the size and scale of the layout that I'm running. But really, it's it's your railroad. It comes down to whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to do just the three foot or the four foot shop lights, um, either fluorescent or LED, uh, three and four foot strip lights, great. If you want to try and do like the regular 60 watt light bulbs or the LED versions of the incandescent light bulbs and hardwire it, then again, you, you, you can do that. There are much cheaper LED strips that you can get on Amazon and places like that that typically come in 16 and, and 32 feet lengths. Um, all of these have pros and cons. Um, like I said, I went with this because one of the advantages is um, it's 2.3 watts per foot in terms of the power draw. So uh, I can get a lot of these running on a 15 amp circuit. It's not then a great operating cost to run this in comparison to other uh, LED lighting options that are available, um, and certainly over regular incandescent lighting options that are available. Um, you can also run up to 150 feet of this off a single power connector. And so I, I guess I didn't talk about um, what happens when you first get this. You'll, one of these is kind of hard, uh, it's not hard wired, but it is, um, almost kind of heat shrunk already onto it so you probably could get out if you wanted to but what ends up is there's a heat shrink version of this already on and on the other end there's a, a little power inverter that's kind of part of the cable and then you have just a regular two prong uh, power connector that goes straight into the outlet uh, runs on 120 volts um, I don't know, there's probably European versions available available in other countries, but the US one, it's just 120 volts, so it just goes straight into a regular power outlet. And then, like I say, you can have up to 150 feet running off that single outlet. So, um, again, the way that I'm running the layout, that works out perfectly for me. But your railroad, you can do whatever you want, but I know some people have asked about these SC5050 LEDs. They are kind of intriguing. They do uh, have a good amount of power output. There's quite a few um, uh, people in various forums that have talked about using them and you know want to do photos on using them but hopefully seeing all of this together in action makes sense probably other suppliers that you can get this from as well ledsupply.com at least in the u.s seems to be a pretty big supply um, very very quick on packing and shipping like i make an order and two days later it's it's at my door and um a couple of orders that I've made with them you can take that <laughs> as it is but it seems like they're, they're pretty well put together and they seem to do a lot of work for electrical contractors as well so 
pretty good shipping, pretty good pricing, and overall end up with uh, a pretty good product. So hope this has been useful, hope it makes sense and kind of clears up some things. If you have any other questions, do drop them down in the comments. I can try and answer them the best that I can. Uh, and then do check out some of those other videos where one of them I, I talk about some of the challenges and the considerations that went into lighting and why I went this way. And then I also have uh, another video that then uh, shows installing that first 120 or so feet of lighting and then you get to see a little bit more of this in action. But thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and follow along so you can see uh, as I get more of this lighting up and running and then what it looks like once the actual uh, track and trains and some scenery is down and kind of see this railroad come to life. All right, take care. Bye-bye.